here with Rolex rankings number 15, Hannah Green, our 2019 KPMG Women's PGA winner. I know last year was, was a little weird showing up to a Ron Aminka, no fans. I think this is a bit more appropriate what it will feel like as a, as a mm -hmm. major champion. What have the last few days been like for you? Yeah, it's been really nice being out here and um, having spectators back out. Definitely missing those, but, um, you know, just rolling up and having my own parking space and, you know, seeing my face around, you know, the clubhouse, it's, it's a great feeling. Uh, it's hard not to smile when you see that. So um, I'm really looking forward to playing uh, this week and um, hopefully I can do well. Say Young mentioned that yesterday, pulling in for the first time <laughs> and seeing her face big on a poster as a first-time major winner. Does it ever get old? No, not really. Um, today is actually the date, uh, two years today, when I won. So it's going to be a special week, no matter what the outcome is. Um, but yeah, like Sayoung said, it is quite strange. Um, obviously, she's won many events, but this was my first one. So it was, it was a little bit of a surprise. But um, yeah, it, it gives you a little bit of confidence to, to hopefully do well again. That's awesome. I hadn't done that math, knowing it was literally two, two years ago today. Mm -hmm. What do you remember most about, about that week at Hazeltine and maybe those last few hours? Uh, the last few hours were hectic. Um, you know, it, I was just so lucky that I had so many you know, loved ones with me. Um, I really couldn't have planned it any better. I would have obviously loved to have had my parents there to celebrate with, but um, you know, to have my boyfriend, my best friend and my idol there, <laughs> I think it's a pretty good list of people to celebrate with. But um, the last probably 40 minutes of golf was kind of hard to remember just because I was so pumped up and so nervous and first time in that position. But um, I've had a couple of memories pop up of, you know, me holding that final putt and then everyone uh, racing onto the green to spray me with beer. So, um, yeah, it's good to, good to know and good to see those memories again and hopefully create some new ones this yes. week. Fast forward two years, we're getting back to normal. We've got fans out there. It's much more of a normal feel. Mm -hmm. We're at a new place, though. You got your win at, at Hazeltine. Now we're mm -hmm. here at Atlanta Athletic. You've had a couple of days to see the golf course. What are your takeaways about this course? Yeah, well, obviously, we've got a, quite a lot of rain on Monday, so I think the course is going to be quite challenging. Um, it's going to be pretty much all carry this week, mm -hmm. so it's going to suit people that hit it long. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the PGA sets up the golf course. Um, it's, a great, um, it's a great track. It's definitely going to be a ball striking course. Um, but, you know, the greens are quite difficult to read. So I think, you know, it will favour people that are probably used to green. But um, I've been rolling it good the last few weeks. I just haven't quite made the putts. They haven't gone in. So I just got to stay patient like you always do at major championships. But... Um, I'm not really sure what the scoring will be like. I guess it will obviously depend how they set up the golf course. Um, but uh, I have good feelings this week, mm -hmm. so that's always nice. And you, you mentioned you've been playing well. Some of the, the thing, balls not falling, just falling in. You've been playing really well. You haven't missed a cut in almost a year. A lot of good top 10, top 20 finishes. Mm -hmm. What Have you been working on stuff in your game? Or what, what, what do you think is the reason for this solid play, if not yet, that breakthrough win again? Um, I mean, coming in with a shorter club has definitely helped this season, but um, I feel like every year I've gotten a little bit better, and obviously that's what you're trying to do. Um, every day you want to get better, but sometimes that doesn't happen. So it is nice to see that the stuff that I've been doing in you know, the preseason is you know, still paying off. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, to hold some more putts this week, mm -hmm. but um, I'm just feeling a lot more confident, and I think that is, has come from winning KPMG a couple of years ago. Good. Well, thanks to everybody on the line for your patience earlier. We're pretty sure we've got our, uh, our technical issues fixed. So I'm going to ask Kent Paisley to unmute and ask your questions. Go ahead, Kent. All right, Christine. I'm glad this is working out now. Hannah, you mentioned that this was your first win. It was particularly memorable. You're part of a recent trend of the last 10 majors. Seven of them were won by first-time winners. Is there anything about majors in particular that would allow a player to more easily win for the first time compared to a regular LPG event? Um, I think because it is in your, you know, the first time you're in that position, you don't really know what you have to lose. Um, I think that's probably what helped me. And um, I want to say when I was in contention in Singapore, I was probably just as nervous and we didn't even have spectators. But I think it's because I knew what I had to lose. Um, I've had, you know, two wins out here on tour and um, you know, I was in contention those weeks, so it was, you know, a success story. But I think because I was so close to winning, you know, I knew what it felt like. But I don't know, I didn't actually realize there was that many girls that had, you know, won for the first time. Um, but I guess they're just, you know, young and free and no real bad memories, I guess. So um, hopefully I can stop that stat this week and <laughs> win again. But we'll see what happens.
<laughs> How much more difficult is it to play knowing what you have to lose? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard not to think about, you know, the stuff that's happened prior. Sometimes it's good. You obviously have good feelings and good memories, but sometimes there are bad thoughts that are really hard to block out. So, um, I, you know, that's why we have caddies to rely on, and that's why we have an entire team to help us through that. So I'll be relying on them probably this week. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, Kent. Next, we're going to go to Douglas Maida. Douglas, you can unmute. All right. Thanks. Uh, Hannah, you just mentioned that uh, the confidence you received from winning the KPMG a couple of years ago was a, a big boost to the way you've played. Mm -hmm. Has there been any other sorts of uh, ways that the KPMG Women's PGA impacted your career? Um, I guess just the recognition by fellow tour players. Um, obviously, some people know that I decided to go back to Australia for four weeks after I won KPMG, so I hadn't seen um, a lot of girls on tour for nearly a month. So. Um, I just guess going back um, and seeing players that I've never really played before, or even really met, have them come up to me and congratulate me. It definitely made me feel like I'm on the radar a little bit more. So, um, yeah, to get the recognition from fellow, you know, tour players as well as, um, you know, people back home. Um, I had a lot of media to do. Um, I don't think really many people in Perth really knew me. So, um, I guess, you know, that has now changed in the golfing world. But, um yeah, it's given me some confidence. Obviously, achieved a huge thing, so I think I should have that confidence. Great. Um, how are you approaching this event, and what have you been focusing on in your preparations? Um, I've had a great season so far. Um, I have, you know, had some top tens. I've been in contention, and I don't see why I can't do that again this week. Um, you know, major championships are long weeks, so I just want to make sure um, that I'm not pushing myself too early. Uh, especially with the finishing holes this week, anything can really happen. Um, there's a lot of water on this golf course, so you can just make one bad swing and have a, a big number. So hopefully I keep those off my scorecard and um, just mentally stay within it. This is my fifth event in a row, so hopefully I don't have too many times out there where I'm you know, a little bit tired. But um, I think so far my preparation, um, I've been smart about it, haven't pushed myself too hard. So hopefully I'll be ready to go till Sunday. One last question, if I may. Uh, to start your session today, you spoke about the celebration that you had at Hazeltine and how important it was to you. Uh, at Olympic Club, you stayed behind to help Yuka celebrate her victory. Mm -hmm. um, how important was it to to show some support to your fellow competitor? Yeah, I mean, Yuka's come over here from Japan and, you know, traveling with her family, but, you know, this isn't her tour that she's a member of just yet. I mean, obviously now she has, but I wanted to make sure that she feels welcome. Um, I've known her for so long. Um, we met um, playing golf in Asia Pacific region, um, known each other for probably seven, eight years. So um, although we haven't really seen each other that much in those um, few years, um, she's obviously ticked off a great thing. And I'm really happy that she's, you know, joining our tour and going to come out and play with us. Um, but yeah, she, yeah, she deserves it. Um, She's going to be a great player and probably one to watch. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Douglas. We're going to go over here to Karen Krause. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Australia is such an Olympic mad country. What would be a bigger deal back there, your major or a gold medal? Um, I would say a gold medal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think because it is so rare to get a gold medal, you know, yeah. once every four years. Um, Obviously, winning a major is still hard, even though we have five <laughs> chances a year. Um, it's hard to get your name on a trophy, but um, I think everyone would notice, um, not just the golfing world would notice um, if you won a medal. Right. So. A follow to that, does it puzzle you then that your male counterparts are, have bailed from it by and by? Yeah, it's interesting to see how the men and women um, have you know, changed their schedule for it. Um, it's a tournament that I am prioritizing. I'm going back to Australia uh, on Monday um, so that I can be as fresh as possible for the Olympics. Um, it is disappointing, but you know, I can understand where they're coming from. Um, with our side of the schedule, it is very hectic. You know, some girls will be coming um, from Europe to then go to Asia and go back to Europe. So I think I've you know, made the right decision for myself um, in order to go back to Australia and prepare that way, but not everyone can sacrifice that. So. Um, I'd say for the men, it's probably the same thing. So it is a tough choice. And I guess those guys are probably going to try and compete um, in 2024 in Paris. 
I wanted to ask you about um, the new STATS project in partnership with KPMG that was announced yesterday. It's it's great for us to, we all know NB's a good petter. We all know <laughs> so-and-so is a good ball striker. But what does it mean to you as an athlete um, to be able to really put that into context and to be able to maybe refine and work more on different parts of your game? Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Um, it can change the way you prepare for a tournament. Um, it can change the way you play during the tournament. Um, I think, you know, me and my team have always, you know, looked at stats and um, to have the tour be able to, you know, get that to us as well. Um, it'd be really interesting to see, you know, I've always looked at my own game, but it'd be interesting to see where I rank um, against my fellow competitors and see what I can improve. Um, but yeah, it's great that KPMG have jumped on board because I think it is a long overdue thing. I think we really need it. And, you know, I think that's what the fans want to see. Um, you know, PGA Tour have got a great stats program and everyone can see it. So I think, you know, that we should have that on LPGA. Completely agreed. Do you have anything further for Hannah? Um, or, I do. Ahead, just to <laughs> pound this Olympic theme, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm curious what you think it says about where the men's and women's games are right now that the men on the women almost unanimously it's like the highlight of their year and the mm -hmm. men are like ambivalent about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. even the ones that are going are not speaking with the same enthusiasm mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. why what to what do you owe that um i guess it's just probably the money that they're playing for yeah. every week um you know i think we play for a great money um you know, those guys can retire when, you know, they're finished with their careers, <laughs> but most of us on tour are going to have a family or we're going to, you know, move on to something else that we want to do. So I think probably that perspective has probably changed, um, you know, playing for money versus playing for a medal. I don't know. I'd rather a gold medal <laughs> than uh, a huge paycheck because hopefully I just keep playing well and, you know, that'll come with it. So it is quite interesting, everyone's views, but um, I hope... Maybe COVID will, you know, change that. Maybe next Olympics um, we'll see a difference. Um, I think Paris will be a pretty cool place to play. So maybe that will entice people a bit more. Thank you. All right, and we're going to go back to Zoom for one more question. Kyle Wasco, you can unmute. Uh, sorry, this is Shane. I'm on a friend's Zoom account. Oh, um, sorry. Hi, <laughs> Shane. I was looking. <laughs> it's like, okay. Who's Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hannah, you were already asked about, uh, you know, how many first-time major winners there have been, and you're one of them. Uh, it seems like it's at the point right now where it's very unpredictable in the women's game who might win. Do you think the depth of talent has led to a place where that's a permanent situation, or do you think it's only a matter of time before we'll see, you know, another NB Park, for example, who's winning, you know, four or five uh, majors? Yeah, um, it's hard. Um, there's so many young girls coming through. Um, there's so much talent on the tour, and we are such a global tour. So, um, I mean, obviously, we're all trying to dominate and have as many wins as possible. But, um, yeah, we have seen a lot of first-time winners at majors as well as just uh, regular tour events. So um, I think it just goes to show we're all trying to push each other and um, try to be the number one player in the world. So it's a hard question to answer. Um, I don't know if we'll see many players that have the record that Inby Park does. Um, played with her the other day and, you know, when she got announced to the tee, it was 21 wins and I was like, wow, um, that makes me want to smile. So I don't know if we'll quite see anyone do that, but um, yeah, you never know, I guess. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. I'm going to call you Kyle from now on. Just get used to it. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Thanks so much, Hannah. Have a good one. Thank you.